hello, welcome to uh, Doodle Club uh, by Bullet Map Academy. Uh, this is Bullet Map Doodle Club. Um, we are here to doodle while listening to a story. I'm going to tell a story. You're going to doodle. We're going to have a look at some of the doodles. We're going to share ideas. I'm going to tell the story again, and you're going to keep doodling. And each day, I give you a little doodling tip. Now, the tips that we've done so far. This is Doodle Club 8. So let me show you um, the tips so far. Are you spotlighting me, Joanna? Great. OK. So we've done the last one. We talked about wiggly lines, telling a story with a long wiggly line. That was interesting. And then we doodled the wind. And then we doodled with some symbols. And we doodled with different eyes in our faces. And then before that, we doodled with little lines for movement. And doodle club number two, we did landlines, lines to do the landscape. And obviously, one of the easiest things to doodle is stick men, and they're fantastic. Now, today, I want to concentrate on another fun bit of doodling. Have a look at my paper here. And we are going to do uh, uh, look at dude again, our doodle club uh, person. So we've got doodle club. We'll do our drawing for doodle club. Dude. Doodle. And there's the nose club. And this is his face and his ears and his mouth. Now, this is, are we at number eight? Yes. Hashtag, we'll put an earring in his ear, number eight. So one of the things that I actually really quite enjoying when I'm listening, I don't do it all the time, but just sometimes, is to do join the dots, okay? Now, join the dots is, you've done join the dots before, but this is random join the dots. So sometimes when I'm doing the central image on a bullet map or a mind map, I, I just don't know what the drawing's going to be about. So I just do some random dots, okay? And in any old place. And then I take uh, a pen or a pencil and I start to draw to the dots. I can do it in straight lines or I could do curvy lines and curve it different ways follow the curves of the dots maybe and then it's kind of like looking at clouds in the sky i've got a funny shape there and one of the things that's quite fun to do is to put um eyes somewhere maybe a nose. And then I start drawing it into something. I think this could be, could it be a horse? Maybe it could be a horse, you know? And maybe I could put, maybe I could join this and maybe I could do a tail. I don't know. <laughs> I've got a peg leg horse. <laughs> and then what I like to do is to just, color different bits in and see what happens when I color it in. Now this is a little bit different because this isn't necessarily doodling what you're hearing in the story. And you can doodle what you hear in the story, but sometimes just doodling and listening helps you listen to the story and, and get absorbed in the story. And uh, that's just as fun and as important sometimes as taking notes. Now we're doing all of this to help you take notes at school. Oh, this is kind of like a dancing horse. Um, and one of the best, one, one, one of the funnest bits about taking notes at school is turning notes into duels. And that's what I do. That's my job at Bullet Map Academy is to teach children how to take notes at school 
using my mind mapping technique called the bullet map system. So today's job is doodling with dots. And let's put bullet map at the top here. We put some hair on doodle. I keep forgetting his hair. Okay, and maybe we could put some dots on doodle. I'll do that later. But let's say he's got some freckles and we're going to connect some of these dots together. Oh, he's got a mustache again. And then maybe we'll color in different parts of doodle and see what that ends up looking like. Like who knows what that will end up looking like. It looks a bit strange there, but we will, I'll play with that later on and let's get to the story. Are you ready for the story? Thumbs up. If you're ready for the story, fantastic. Okie dokie. So today's story is actually a true story about a man who heard a story and didn't know if it was true or not. So he tested out whether it was true. So let me tell you the story about the man who heard a story and then tried to do what was in the story. Let me explain. Many, hundred, uh, many hundreds of years ago, there was a book written by St. Brendan and it was called Brendan's Voyage. And in that book, it was all about an Irish monk. And it said that this Irish monk had got into a leather boat and sailed from Ireland up to the North Pole all the way to America and back before anyone else in the world had sailed to America. Before Columbus, before America was discovered, this monk had gone and sailed across and had all sorts of crazy um, stories in it. Like he landed on top of a, um, a, a whale thinking it was an island and they all got off the boat and started to uh, cook some food on a, uh, a, on a fire. And then suddenly the island moved and they realized it was an enormous whale and crazy stories like that. And no one really believed it could ever have been true until there was a man in the 60s, 1960s. He read this and he thought, he was a sailor, and he thought, I think that could be true. And so what he decided to do was to recreate the voyage. What he did was he went and found out how the monks in 600 AD, that's one and a half thousand years ago, made boats in Ireland. And what they did was they took willow, thin bits of wood, and they made a basket. And then around that basket, they took leather that was so thick, it was as thick as your wrists. And they put leather around the boat. They put a mast in it and they had a leather sail. And then they covered the whole boat in leather. And then um, they sailed. And these monks in Scotland and Ireland used to sail all over the place. They were real adventurers. Now, St. Brendan had uh, written every detail of his journey on how he did the boat and how he did everything. Uh, it was like a ship's log. And this chap recreated this boat. And so they got in the boat and they made it exactly to the specifications. It was about as long as two cars. And um, there was four men that got in the boat and they put in all their food and they put in extra leather and they stitched the whole boat together themselves, being taught by professional leather makers. The, 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 the needles to go through the leather were like nails and they had to thread them and hammer them through and pull them through. It was so thick. Well, they launched. No one really could believe they could actually get across to America in a leather boat, but they were going to give it a try. And the biggest problem was that they would have to sail to the North Pole through the ice. And so what they did was they sailed up 
Scotland to Iceland, up to the North Pole near where the ice flows are because that's the most direct route to America. And what happened was a storm blew in and it was ferocious and it moved all the ice. And in front of them, they could see on their scanner that there was an ice breaking ship, huge thick walls to the ship that had gone into the ice and got caught by the ice and it had actually been hit by the ice and there was a hole in the side of that big ship and it was sinking and they were going through the same ice flow and they went through the same ice flow and as they went through the ice flow the ice hit the leather and cut it like a knife well do you know what they did instead of sinking because they were sinking one of the men took the leather that was as thick as your wrist when, and they held him over the side of the boat and he stitched the leather onto the outside of the boat while they were sailing through the ice flow and they st stitched the leather on and it stopped leaking. And because they had a leather boat and they could fix it as they were sailing, they could actually get through the ice flow without sinking, whereas the steel ship they couldn't fix and they just had to wait to be rescued, they sailed through the ice flow and they made it all the way over to North America. And they recreated the trip of St. Brendan. And that's the story of St. Brendan and his trip across to the USA. I hope you enjoyed that. Did you enjoy that? Thank you, thank you. So let's have a look at some of your doodles, see what you've done. Okay, Lilu, we've got a dotty, a dotty uh, person. I love it. Fantastic. And we've got our, our uh, leather boat. Do you know what the leather boats were called? They were called coracles. A coracle is the name of a leather boat. And the fishermen used them to go fishing in Scotland and in Ireland. Uh, they made little ones and put them on their backs and carried them places, the small ones. The, the big one, like St. Brendan, went all sorts of places. You can carry that one. Okay, we've got North America. Theodore, let's have a look at what you've got there. Oh, great. Oh, the, the storm. And so, oh, they're on the whale. I can see that. Okay, who's next? Oh, this is like a piece of modern art, Evie. Very dramatic. Loving it. Oh, and there's a boat in there. I can see the boat. And I can see, actually, can we put the, 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 the microphones on so Evie could say a little bit, Evie? Okay. Let's just put on everyone's microphones. Oh, loving the face, dude, etc. Okay, who's next? Eleanor, fantastic. Thank you. Oh, there is an aggressive storm. Oh, you liked the story about Brendan landing on the whale. Excellent, Stephen. Thank you. Ah, excellent. Loving it, Ben. Those are some nice color. I like the coloring in. And it, Elisa, excellent. Okay, who's next? Josephine. Oh, interesting. That person starting to come out of the, the dots. Fantastic. Oh, interesting. A line inside of a line. Do you know what? That's made me think I want to practice that. Doing the dots inside of lines inside of the lines. Loving it. Leah, thank you. That's giving me some ideas. Andrew. Ah, interesting, this zigzag crossing lines like, like it's thread. Liking that. It's like a coracle, in fact. That's how the coracle is made. Andrew, great use of the lines. Henry, oh, look at that coloring in. Fantastic, Henry. Uh, okay, let's go to the story again. Ready to hear the story again? Second time round, the story of St. Brendan and his voyage to the USA. Well, it wasn't the USA at the time, was it? It was North America at the time. Um, actually, let me get my facts right. 
I should find the name of the man who did this voyage. I've got his book somewhere um, and I've got it somewhere on my bookshelves, but I won't find it just now unless I can look very quickly and spot it straight away. It's Sometimes fine. I can. Nope. So this is the recreation of the voyage of St. Brendan to America. A long time ago, there was a legend told of a monk in Ireland called St. Brendan, who was quite an adventurer, who had decided to take his leather boat and a few of his companions and sail as far to the west as possible. And they sailed and they sailed and they sailed. It was the time when people thought that was the edge of the world and you'd fall off, but he just kept going. And he kept going and he kept going and he went through all sorts of adventures, all sorts of things went wrong. And he went through this ice land and where they managed to get through these fields of ice. And then when they broke through, they sailed on and they got to this land, which was North America. And uh, no one believed him when he came back. They all thought he had made it up. And he wrote this book and they told these legends about St. Brendan and no one really trusted him. Not that, not that they didn't trust him, they just thought it was so unbelievable that they couldn't believe it. He wrote the book anyway. Well, one day, an adventurous man a bit like St. Brendan read that book and he thought to himself, do you know what? I think it could be true. And so he read the book as if it was an actual manual for doing it. And he thought to himself, I wonder if I could recreate the trip and redo the trip and prove that St. Brendan was right. Well, him and his friends decided to spend a lot of money and a lot of time of their own for a whole year and a half rebuilding a leather boat. And that's what they did. They took uh, strips of wood and made this wooden basket that was the length of two cars. And then they put a skin of leather and stitched it all together, leather as thick as your wrist. Uh, it was from an ox's hide and it was so, so strong. It was like, it was bendy, but it was so strong. And they stitched it together and they, they followed all of the rules and the traditional crafts at the time. They didn't know why they did things the way they did, but they followed it. And what happened was they made the boat and they set sail from Ireland and they went up north. They went past Iceland. They went past the North Pole. And when they got not to the North Pole, but to the, the ice around the North Pole in that sea area, as they sailed through it, there was another huge icebreaker ship, a professional one made of solid steel, steel as thick as my head. It was so thick, especially for ice, but it, it got stuck in the ice and the ice had crushed and cut that boat and it was sinking. Well, they went through the same ice flow at the same time. And sure enough, the ice cut through their level leather. They were very careful. They dodged all the icebergs they could, but it's same areas that are Titanic and so on. And they got cut and they started to sink as well. Well, one of his shipmates um, uh, said, I'm going to fix the boat. And he grabbed a huge piece of leather that they brought as spare. And he went over the side of the boat and his friend held him and the waves were smashing. The ice was in the water. His fingers were really cold. He had woolly gloves and he took the woolly gloves and he started to stitch the leather across the gap. And he managed to stitch it all and cover it in the tar to seal it off. And they were fine. And they actually make it out through the ice flow. They kept sailing and they made it all the way to North America. And they proved that St. Brendan was telling the truth when he had sailed to North America. And he had actually sailed there before Columbus had made it. So it was 
a, 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 an obscure monk with, I think, eight of his friends had sailed all the way from Ireland to America. And that's the recreation of the story of the voyage of St. Brendan. Children, let's have a look at some of these spectacular creations you've made. It's amazing what you can do while you're listening to something. Actually, let's have a look at Zeus. Zeus is one of my, uh, is part of the Bullet Map Academy team. Let's have a look at yours. Oh my goodness, that is spectacular. How you pulled out that boat from joining the dots. I'm loving the coloring in as well. Well done, Zeus. Who's, Zeus is an adult. Who's next? Josephine, gorgeous, loving the ice, loving how you turn those dots into a sail and the sea. Oh, and that's interesting, that shaded above. Fantastic, who's next? Joanna, can you include the people I might not have looked at beforehand, please? So Ada, loving the whole join. I can see that you've got right into this. It's quite consuming uh, once you start doing it. Fantastic. Who's next? Okay, Hugo, I'm going down. I see. Fantastic. I did it. Oh, well done. I like the um, speech bubbles. Oh, fantastic. Meryl, let's have a look at yours. Can't see it. Oh my goodness, love how you've used the whole page and the boldness. Oh, and the swirly lines. I like the different kinds of lines. Fantastic. Who's next? Oh, wow. You've done the, the story circle and the picture on the inside. Oh, loving it. Fantastic. Great piece of visual storytelling there, Haley. Who's next? North, south, east, west. You got the points of the compass and the boat. Loving it. Eleanor, thank you. And Leah. Oh, you've colored in that central. Loving it. USA. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you. Aha. You've added to the I wonder what you could call that, the, the, the rainbow bird, the, I don't know, fantastic. Let's keep going. Well done, Ben. Stephen, very detailed. Oh, we've only got five minutes to go to the parent stock. Gosh, children, we have finished. Uh, let's go to speak to everyone. Well done, everyone. Thank you for joining us on YouTube. Those of you that are watching on YouTube, I hope you've, you're have you enjoying Doodle Club. This is day eight of 30. We're going to do 30 Doodle Clubs during the Corona season. So um, please remember to take a photo and send it to someone you love um, in another house somewhere, your grandparents, your granny, um, other uh, relatives that you have that are maybe older, send them a photo of this just to perk up their day. And a video retelling of the story in Doodle Club. All these Doodle Clubs are free and you can share them with anyone. You can share these videos on Facebook. You can also um, uh, uh, you can also um, invite other people, friends and so on to come and join you on Doodle Club. And obviously you can watch the other Doodle Clubs on YouTube that we've left there. So take a video of your story, hands up. How many people, fingers up, how many, how many times have you sent a video to uh, a, a photo to uh, a relative? Oh, great. We've got six. We've got four. We've got one. And how many videos have you sent? Fingers up. Two videos, three videos, four videos. Fantastic. So keep sending them. Keep brightening up people's days with your beautiful drawings. And I will see you. We'll, we'll have a chat privately just now on Zoom, children, and we'll stop the YouTube live uh, in three, two, one, thank you, goodbye.
Hey, See you on birthday. YouTube. Oh, wave goodbye to ch children. Wave to everyone who's watching on YouTube and adults. Fantastic. Bye-bye.